My name is Candy Crosby Hastings. This is a video discussion board presentation for U.S. History 512 at Liberty University. I'm filming this video today in the conference room at the Salina Public Library in Salina, Kansas. I chose this location because just a few feet outside of this room are exhibits that celebrate women's accomplishments throughout history. And that's certainly appropriate for the discussion we are going to have today about a woman who fought for independence in America's Revolutionary War. According to Robert H. Land's research on Mar Margaret Cochran Corbin, found in the book Notable Women, no, excuse me, Notable American Women, 1607 to 1950, little is known about Margaret Corbin's early life. We do know that she was born in Franklin County, Pennsylvania. We do know that she was pretty much orphaned by a Native American attack that killed her father and took her mother captive. She and her brother were then reared by her mother's brother. In 1722, she married a man named John Corbin of Virginia. During the American War for Independence, John enlisted in the military in what was known as a matros, or an artillery private. Margaret followed her husband into battle. Now, her plan was simply to serve as a cook, a nurse, a mender, a water woman for the Continental soldiers. If, if we look up here at these photographs, these are photographs that I recently took at the Museum of World Treasures in Wichita, Kansas. Here we have the British uniform, the military uniform. Here we have the Continental American soldiers' uniforms. And right down here we have a little bit of information, which is where I first heard about Margaret Corbin, that she had a very traditional role. She was happy with her role of wife, and that is why she went with her husband into battle, was to care for him and to care for the other soldiers. According to Land, John and Margaret Corbin were in New York during the infamous capture. At the Battle of Harlem Heights in September of 1776, John was killed in action. In fact, he died right beside his wife. Now, n without hesitation, Margaret picked up his arms and went on to fight the battle. Her fighting for the American War for Independence left her permanently disabled in one of her arms due to an injury from a three great shot. Now again over here I have a photograph that I took again at the Museum of World Treasures that shows the ammunition for this artillery just to get an idea of the kind of injury that she sustained. Because of her permanent injury, according to Land, she was awarded $30 in a war pension on June 29, 1779. On July 6th of the same year, the Congress voted to give her half the pay given to a soldier and also the money for a new suit of clothes. The Board of War later awarded her an annual allowance for clothing. In 1780, she was enrolled in the Invalid Regiment for wounded soldiers. Land reports that she was given money for rum and whiskey that had been withheld from her as a soldier. She remained with this Invalid Regiment until it disbanded three years later. In the article, Women in the American Military, found in Blackwell Companions to American History, the, compa the Companion to American Military History, Deanne Campbell reports Corbin was the first woman to receive this type of pension. And not only this, she was also buried in the U.S. Military Academy Cemetery at West Point. Now, Dr. Deborah Michaels points out on the website for the National Women's History Museum that Corbin died just prior to her 50th birthday. Originally, she was buried along the Hudson River in a rather unclear, obscure grave. In 1923, though, her body was moved to West Point and she was given full military honors. Now, unlike others in the American Revolution history that have become so-called legends, there are few misunderstandings or the type of yarns that were spun around Betsy Ross and the American flag or George Washington and the cherry tree that were, you know, that also coincided with Margaret Corbin, those were just absent. However, according to Land, there has been historical confusion over a title, and that title was Captain Molly. Generally, the title Captain Molly was attributed to Molly Pitcher, another woman in the American Revolution. However, in the 20th century, the Daughters of the American Revolution concluded that Captain Molly actually referred to Margaret Corbin. It was this acceptance by the Daughters of the American Revolution that led to the West Point burial. Corbin's name also received recognition in New York in the 1970s. It was then, according to a newspaper article entitled A Heroine's Circle, that the foot of Tyrone, Fort Tyrone Park, which by the way was named for the last British governor of colonial New York, was renamed for this American Revolution heroine. Margaret Cochran Corbin was a woman who was thrust into a role for which she did not plan. However, she did not allow this new role to destroy her. She fought for the American cause, 
She suffered the consequences, and she paved the way for future American women to receive military pensions. <laughs>